In the video, a white color new energy vehicle that was charging suddenly exploded. It generated a powerful shockwave that sent the car virtually soaring. It appears that the car was propelled to three to five meters. In slow motion footage, it can be observed that parts resembling car doors were propelled by the shockwave as the car shot upwards. The electric vehicle while in motion seemingly exploded instantly after colliding with a directional sign. The front portion of the car can be seen disintegrating into debris while the remaining body of the vehicle quickly ignited over a wide area. This is a flagship level SUV. Despite Tesla having so many collision accidents, I've never seen any media reporting Tesla exploding. I've only heard of Tesla's brake failures. But why do we see Chinese electric cars frequently catching fire after collisions recently? Why do they catch fire right after a collision? Why is it that you don't even have to crash it, it can catch fire even when parked underground? In the video, an electric car is exploding, but what's different was that it was repeated and sustained. Even though the person filming is at a relatively safe distance, the sound of explosions can still be heard resembling crackling fireworks. Electric vehicles are not only catching fire on the roads, but now even at sales centers. Recently, a BYD automobile sales center located on Hunan Avenue in Shenyang experienced a sudden fire. Firefighters can be seen battling the blaze on one side of the sales office while BYD vehicles parked on the roof began to ignite. Thick black smoke billows from the parking area spreading extensively. It appears that the fire is not confined to just one location as dense smoke can also be seen emerging from windows on the right side of the top floor. Electric vehicles in China are also called new energy vehicles. They have been prone to self-ignition or explosions due to their immature technology. As shown in the last few video clips, you will frequently come across social media videos of Chinese electric cars catching fire or exploding. This underscores the ongoing safety issues with Chinese electric vehicles that remain unresolved. Just like regular traffic accidents, these incidents occur with alarming frequency, with new cases of self-ignition reported almost every month. In addition to self-ignition issues, the artificial intelligence navigation system in Chinese electric cars have also been the source of some humorous mishaps. One driver of a BYD electric vehicle had the intention of charging the car but ended up being guided by the navigation system to a cemetery, which left them both amused and bewildered. Hello, Xiaodi. I'm here. I asked you to navigate me to the nearest national grid charging station, but how did I end up here? Which one should I choose? National grid charging station. Hello, Xiaodi. Hello. To the National Grid Charging Station. Which one should I choose? The first one. You have reached your destination. Reached my destination? This is a cemetery, not my destination. I want a charging station. In terms of consumer contraction in the second half of 2023, the growth rate of the Chinese electric vehicle market has significantly slowed down compared to the previous year. According to the latest data provided by the China Passenger Car Association, CPCA, it is evident that the overall market trend has shown a noticeable downturn. Not only have electric vehicles sales experienced a significant slowdown, but the overall automobile sales volume has also seen a considerable decline. According to CPCA, from Jan to November 2023, among the top 10 automakers in China, aside from BYD, four other automakers have experienced year-on-year -year decline in sales. These companies are SAIC Volkswagen, GAC Toyota, SAIC General Motors, and Great Wall Motor. The remaining five automakers have seen minimal growth, with some nearly maintaining sales levels similar to the previous year. It has been reported that by the end of the third quarter, a total of 5.9 million electric vehicles have been sold in China, falling short of the sales targeted by 30%. Overall, this reflects a declining purchasing power among Chinese automotive consumers. It signals the precursor to a downturn in the automotive industry. Next year, the outlook of Chinese automotive industry, especially for new energy vehicles that do not align quality with price, appears to be rather grim. Electric vehicles are one of China's proud new energy industries, along with lithium batteries and solar power, all referred to as the three new emerging industries. They have become a significant economic driver under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party. 
But according to recent research by experts, it appears that the CCP's reliance on these three new industries is starting to show signs of decline. In the lithium battery sector, the current situation in China is also not very optimistic. Four years from now, we will witness the beginning of a battery catastrophe. The current prosperity in the battery market is because of supply shortages. It is driven by the unexpected growth of the new energy car market, the rapid increase in the market share of new energy vehicles, and the simultaneous boom in energy storage have created immense demand for batteries, triggering massive production capacity expansion. But Rational business leaders are aware that this is unsustainable. Once supply catches up with demand, massive production capacity will follow suit. In China, any city with a GDP of over 500 billion is heavily investing in batteries. Governments are pouring hundreds of billions into battery factories. When you add it all up, China's battery production is enough to take us to Mars. Four years from now, we will witness the beginning of a battery catastrophe. The so-called white petroleum, known as lithium carbonate, has experienced a collapse in futures prices. According to reports on December 5th, lithium carbonate futures hit their daily limit again. It marked a new low since their listing and the second consecutive limit down session, with all contracts falling below the 100,000 yuan, approximately 14,000 US dollars mark. The bearers have dominated the market. Just in 2022, battery-grade lithium carbonate had once reached as high as 600,000 yuan, approximately 84,000 US dollars per ton. Now the price of lithium carbonate has dropped by 80% from its peak. Lithium is widely used in the new energy industry, high-end manufacturing, nuclear power, chemicals, and other traditional industries. China is a major global production hub for lithium salts, with a share of over two-thirds in terms of capacity production and consumption. In China, lithium carbonate accounts for an even higher percentage, reaching 60%. Market experts anticipate that futures price could further drop to 80,000 yuan, approximately 11,000 US dollars per ton. At the current prices, roughly one third of manufacturers are already facing losses. In response to the recent decline in lithium carbonate prices, Li Xiang, CEO of a new energy vehicle giant, NIO, reshared a relevant Weibo post and commented, To support our sales of pure electric vehicles next year, lithium carbonate is also in the fight. Despite the overall pessimistic sentiment in the industry and across various sectors, lithium carbonate continues to face downward pressure. According to reports, lithium carbonate producers in Yichun City, Jiangsu province, have recently pressed the pause button. Some lithium salt companies have even resorted to transferring part of the lithium carbonate products to offset their purchase payments. Many lithium mining listed companies such as Gunfeng Lithium and Salt Lake Potash are expected to see decline in performance. In the era of new energy vehicles, the profitability has led many companies and governments to invest heavily in battery production, but they have simultaneously overlooked another critical issue related to lithium-ion batteries. China currently lacks a well-established battery recycling industry. Interviewing you for a professional question, what? What should I do if the battery swells? It's no longer usable. And how should we handle discarded batteries? Just throw them away. Nobody comes to recycle these things. Many lithium-ion battery recycling efforts still heavily rely on manual sorting. While China has been vigorously developing battery production and research in the industry, there are few companies willing to invest in specialized battery recycling. Data shows that in 2023, China is expected to generate 2.3 million tons of scrapped power batteries, but the current recycling volume of only accounts for 20%. This means that the remaining 80% of discarded batteries might end up in the regular trash bins. Given the significant pollution associated with batteries, it raises concerns about whether the large-scale production of batteries over the years could lead to additional environmental challenges. Let's take a closer look at China's solar energy industry. Currently, three-quarters of the world's solar energy capacity is in China. Since 2004, Europe and the United States have vigorously promoted energy transformation, driving the global photovoltaic market. The CCP, recognizing the enormous profits with this trend, strongly supported numerous photovoltaic enterprises. In 2005, China's first private photovoltaic company was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In 2007, China's solar cell production surpassed Japan, making it the world's largest producer of solar cells. In 2022, China's export of photovoltaic products exceeded 50 billion US dollars, representing an 80% year-on-year increase. 
Despite the apparent success of the photovoltaic industry, it has also experienced side effects, notably overcapacity. It is reported that as of December 15th, the market value of Longi green energy technology has evaporated by over 20 billion yuan, approximately 2.8 billion US dollars this year. Recently, China's photovoltaic industry has shown signs of overcapacity with a significant drop in photovoltaic module prices, leading some second tier photovoltaic companies to sell at a loss. At the same time, photovoltaic companies have been frequently reporting layoffs and production cutbacks. The price of polycrystalline silicon has also been continuously declining. According to the silicon branch of the China Non-Ferrous Metal Industry Association, as of December 6, the transaction price of monocrystalline dense material has fallen below 60,000 yuan, approximately 8,400 US dollars per ton. Since the beginning of 2023, the price of polycrystalline silicon has dropped by more than 60%. Faced with rapid price declines, there have been reports of several photovoltaic companies reducing production, shutting down and laying off employees. Several leading mainstream companies are reported to have layoff rate as high as 15 to 20%, with Longyear Green Energy rumored to lay off 10,000 employees. Other companies in the battery sector like Aco reduced production by up to 30%. Even leading photovoltaic equipment companies like Shuzhou Maxwell have seen their stock prices fall, evaporating 40 billion yuan. Lingyang Energy, the world's second largest investors of photovoltaic power stations, has also been selling photovoltaic power stations at lower prices. In addition to domestic challenges, China's new energy industry is also facing international scrutiny and sanctions. Due to the industry's long-term reliance on the CCP for financial support, extensive subsidiaries, and the practice of forcibly reducing product prices, Chinese automakers have captured a significant share of global markets. This has disrupted the new energy industry order in the EU and the US, leading to anti-dumping investigations into China. In 2009, the Chinese government initiated comprehensive support for the new energy industry, including electric vehicles, and began providing subsidiaries. The subsidies for new energy vehicles in some cases exceeded the actual selling price of the vehicles. China manufactures three quarters of the world's lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion battery manufacturers like Contemporary Aprex Technology Co. Limited, CATL, have made significant investments in Xinjiang and have faced allegations of using forced labor from Xinjiang. In 2010 and 2011, China's export of photovoltaic components exceeded 20 billion US dollars, but China subsequently faced consecutive double reverse investigations by Europe and the US. The photovoltaic double reverse cases are among the largest in terms of the amount involved in the history of Sino European trade disputes. Many Chinese photovoltaic companies suffered financial difficulties and some even went bankrupt as a result of these investigations. The EU has formally initiated an anti-subsidy investigation into electric vehicles manufactured in China. This investigation is expected to conclude within 12 months and may result in provisional measures being announced within the next nine months, such as the imposition of anti-subsidy duties. According to a notice in the EU's official journal on October 4th, New energy battery electric vehicles produced in China are suspected of receiving various subsidies from the Chinese government, which is deemed to cause serious harm to EU industries. The investigations include companies like Tesla operating in China, as well as BYD, SAIC Motors and NIO, among others. It was reported that in 2011, the U.S. Department of Commerce initiated double reverse investigations into Chinese photovoltaic companies for allegedly illegally dumping crystalline silicon photovoltaic cells into the U.S. market and receiving illegal subsidies from the Chinese government, including supply chain subsidies and the imposition of trade barriers. In 2017, a Section 301 investigation was launched against Chinese companies. In 2018, additional Section 201 tariffs were imposed on top of the double reverse duties. In 2021, the U.S. found evidence of forced labor in Xinjiang and placed four photovoltaic component manufacturing companies from Xinjiang on its blacklist. On August 18, 2023, the Department of Commerce announced the final results of an anti-circumvention investigation regarding anti-dumping and countervailing measures against Chinese photovoltaic products. It found that there were circumvention taking place in Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam and Malaysia 
at a national level. In addition to the US and the EU, the United Kingdom has also expressed serious concerns about China's misconduct in the field of new energy. According to reports, on November 22nd, the China Strategic Risk Institute, a cross-party Chinese issue think tank based in London, unveiled a report titled Building a Green, Fair and Resilient Solar Supply Chain in the UK Parliament. Members of Parliament from different parties and experts participated in the event. The report highlights the UK's dependence on Chinese solar imports, with imports in the first half of 2023 alone amounting to nearly £300 million. This dependence could potentially undermine the UK's clean energy goals and expose it to supply chain vulnerabilities and human rights issues. Conservative Party members and members of the UK Parliament's Energy Security and Net Zero Committee, Alexander Stafford, warned that China's actions could strangle the global supply of solar technology, leading to concerns about achieving the UK's net zero goals. Another Conservative Party MP, Mark Palsy, also expressed similar concerns, emphasising the risk of associated with dependence on a single source. Overall, the three major industries that China has heavily invested in, electric vehicles, lithium-ion batteries, and the solar energy industry, are facing significant challenges. Domestically, the electric vehicle industry is grappling with issues such as poor quality and declining consumer demand. The lithium-ion battery sector is dealing with problems like future market crashes, production cutbacks, and layoffs. Meanwhile, the solar energy industry is grappling with overcapacity and loss making sales. Internationally, countries like the United States and European nations are becoming increasingly aware that China's new energy products have disrupted the global economic order and raised serious safety concerns. The CCP is facing anti-dumping investigations and corresponding sanctions from the world, presenting a challenging combination of domestic and international issues. The road ahead may not be as smooth as it once seemed for China's new energy industries.